You know, I think I've had my fair share of reviewing trash this year, and I'm still powering through writing a review for Full Metal Alchemist, but I finally saw something this year that I think is worth talking about, other than for, you know, bad reasons. So I'm putting that on standby, because I saw Annihilation. Now, I know my thoughts on Black Panther were really positive. I still really like the movie, but there's a difference between seeing a good, smart comic book film that's got a unique perspective and seeing a legitimately challenging and fascinating movie that really made me think a whole lot. So, if you're wondering why Black Panther didn't get a more formal review, that's why. So, Annihilation is based on the first book in the trilogy of science fiction novels, a book that I own and have partially read but haven't finished because I've been busy. The movie is directed by Alex Garland, a new face in the directing scene coming hot off 2015's excellent film Ex Machina, a movie that I really liked, and while I thought it was incredible from a technical perspective, narratively I thought it was interesting but not quite fully realized. It just didn't push a whole lot of boundaries for this realm of storytelling, it just sort of occupied the same space as something like the original Blade Runner or similar films just with the perspective shifted a little bit. But nonetheless, I saw a lot of potential for Garland to shine if he tackled material that allowed him to really flex his directing and storytelling muscles. I was a huge fan of his screenwriting work in the form of Danny Boyle's Sunshine, a thing that I think is super underrated, and the screenplay was the best part of the movie other than the visuals. And now, lo and behold, in my opinion, Alex Garland has made a yet another film that can be added to the list of entries in the recent science fiction film renaissance we've been having. Last year we had Blade Runner 2049, and this year we have Annihilation. Talking about the movie is difficult for a couple of reasons. I'm going to do my absolute best to avoid spoilers because, let me be completely blunt here, you need to see this movie. It needs to make more money. More people should see it whether you love it or hate it. I think it's an experience that people should definitely try out, because it's probably one of the most unique films I've ever seen. From a filmmaking perspective, this movie has so many influences that it just becomes close to being something wholly original. I think the biggest parallel I can draw is to Apocalypse Now, as this entire movie parallels the Heart of Darkness structure. Some of the basic ideas, the surreal atmosphere, and the sheer insanity of the character's experience, along with the audience as well. And if you know me, I love Apocalypse Now, and nothing gets me more interested in a story than a descent into madness. I've been wanting a spiritual successor to Apocalypse Now for a long, long time, because we simply just don't get movies like that anymore. And now, I think we finally have it. Other films that come to mind are Tarkovsky's Stalker, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and the 2016 film Arrival, but also mixed with some classic horror movies like Predator and the films of David Cronenberg. So, what is this movie actually about? Well, even though the film is pretty layered and complex, it's got a pretty simple setup, which I think it uses to its benefit by having really complicated themes woven around it. Basically, Natalie Portman is a biologist and a former soldier, and her husband, played by Oscar Isaac, has been missing and presumed dead for a year. One day, he suddenly returns, but something is very wrong with him, and Portman gets wrapped up in a covert military and scientific division that's exploring this crazy-ass phenomenon called the Shimmer which is this ever-expanding force field that alters and warps everything inside it. And inside, everyone that goes to the Shimmer doesn't come out. Come to find out that Oscar Isaac is the only person who reportedly returned, and he's super fucked up and really sick. So Portman and a team of other lady scientists go inside the Shimmer to see what the hell is going on, and if they can find some answers as to what the thing actually is. And basically, once they get there, crazy shit starts to hit the fan, and I'll stop there because that's where the movie's magic lies. The environment and creatures inside the Shimmer are absolutely incredible. Garland just puts imagery in every single scene that will linger in your mind forever, using this insane premise to show you some stuff that you won't see anywhere else. While the film is an amalgam of other ideas and stories, the actual visual presentation and imagery is like nothing I've ever seen. This may not be a horror film, film, but holy shit, it has some stuff that chilled me to the bone. Some scenes just play out normally, and suddenly something horrifying will happen without any warning catching you completely off guard. When the film does finally decide to utilize tension, it does so with expertise. There's one scene in the film where it took everything in me not to physically look away. I was in the front row, thanks for making me shit myself, Alex Garland. And the last 25 minutes of the movie was terrifying for an entirely different reason than just well-executed filmmaking and a good use of tension. The ideas and themes in the film are kept really vague and loose, but it's not accidental. Like I said before, great science fiction doesn't answer questions, it asks them. And this film asks questions using just its visuals. I'd argue that the film barely even needs the dialogue, it's so well directed. And I'm still trying to figure out all the little details and meaning from what I saw in the ending. And... Hell, I'm also just trying to figure out what the ending even was. This is the closest I've come to watching a movie that accurately simulates what a drug-induced hallucination is like. And, of course, it's both awesome and terrifying. Bottom line here, people, you will not see another movie like Annihilation this year. Hell, you may not see another movie like Annihilation... 
period. I have literally no idea how this movie even got made, or how Alex Garland was allowed to make something this crazy on this scale. It may not even be your cup of tea based on what I described, but I think it's so good that you need to try it for yourself anyway. While it plays it thematically fast and loose, it leaves room for personal interpretation and ideas to enter your brain by being just vague enough, striking that perfect balance like great sci-fi films before it. As for issues with the movie, they are really minor. The actual visual effects aren't as good as they were in Ex Machina, which was a movie that was entirely convincing as far as I'm concerned, but Annihilation is bigger in scale, and even though the effects aren't always groundbreaking, they always look pretty enough to fit into the visual style, even though they may not fool you. And the money probably all went into the last 25 minutes, which is the best looking part of the film. The practical work is also highly impressive, to the point where I wish that everything was practical, but with a movie this large in scale and concept, that just isn't possible. The cinematography also isn't quite as good as it was in Ex Machina, it's just not quite as tight, but that movie was mostly in one location and it was way more slow-paced, so its Kubrick-esque camera work was probably easier. It's still pretty great, but it felt pretty standard in all the shots where it wasn't showing off something creative or really well composed, which thankfully is a lot of the time. I have heard that some people say that the first part is kind of slow and the acting is sort of restrained, but here's the thing. With movies like this, taking your time in the beginning is crucial. I thought the pacing was perfect, to be brutally honest. It's just the way that movies like this are. Blade Runner 2049, Arrival, and Ex Machina were all that way. As for the acting, both Portman and Jennifer Jason Leigh are definitely more reserved than they are usually, but with Jennifer Jason Leigh specifically, she says she's been looking at the Shimmer for like three years and has gotten no answers, seen countless people go in and never come back, and if she was all fine and dandy, then that really wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense to me personally. She was kind of broken and fucked up, so her being in the David Lynch land of acting was fine by me. And I found Portman's performance to be pretty similar in that regard. She's more emotive, but she's put through so much that normal behavior would have felt out of place here. The movie has more charismatic characters in the form of Gina Rodriguez, and what a shock as everyone starts to lose their minds, that kinda goes away. Whatever complaints I have are honestly afterthoughts. Criticisms that have a minimal impact on both my enjoyment and my determining the quality of the film. Annihilation is fantastic. Fantastic. It's a movie I'd put money on for being near the top of my list once 2018 is over with. 9 out of 10. Not quite perfect, but that doesn't really hold it back from still being a masterpiece.